uh, are from Orana, from Kiambu, from, uh, from where else? Nyeri, Kirinyaga. Yeah. You go to Luya, you'll find Luya are of different subjects, is it? Yeah. And that's why God wants the last message of mercy to reach each and everyone in the world. And we are told this message must be a witness unto the nations. Then the shall, shall the end war come according to the book of Matthew 24 and verse 14. What it tells this message, verse 7 of Revelation 20, uh, of Revelation 14, verse 7, saying with a loud voice, the message should go with a loud word, with a loud voice. So the Bible says, saying with a loud word, with a loud voice. Fear God. Fear God and give glory to who? To him. Yeah. So we have to fear God and to give glory to God. Continue. For the hour of his judgment. For the hour of his judgment is done one. Is come. So the time when the uh, the last message of mercy is given, the hour of judgment is already come. Come. So we are to fear God and give glory to him for their his judgment. And that judgment has already come. Come. And that's why this message will go to everyone. So that they may understand they are to fear God and to give glory to him because there is judgment. Then finish the verse. And worship him that made heaven. And worship him that made heaven and and the heart and the seas and the fountains of water of waters, meaning God is calling a people and preparing a people who will fear him, give him glory, knowing that there is judgment, and those who will worship him, the creator of heaven and, and earth, meaning God knew that people will depart from the worship of true, true God. Are you together? And that's why the last message of mercy is calling each and every one of us to come back to the true worship, to the worship of true God. Now, the second, uh, 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 after the first angel's message is given, and everyone understands, those who reject that message are found in the Bible, in the Bible which is fallen. And that's why we have the second angel's message being given. Which it says, Revelation 14 and verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, And there, there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. Is fallen. That great city. And that Babylon is a great one. It's a great city. Because she made all nations drink. She of made the wine. all nations drink of the wine. Drink of the wine of, of the wrath of our world. Of our fornication. So the whole world is to be drunk of the wine of war, of Babylon, which is that one, which is, which is already fallen, right together. So we are also to look at the Babylon for fallen. And this Babylon is preparing a people for another worship instead of true war, worship. Revelation 14 and verse 9. Revelation 14 and verse 9. And the third angel of God followed, followed them, yeah, saying with a loud voice, saying with a loud voice, if any man do if any man do all, worship the beast and his, and his image. So there is worship of the beast and the worship of the image, image of the beast. Continue. And receive his mark. And his receive forehead. his mark where? In his forehead. In his forehead. Or in his hand. Or in his hand. The same shall, the same shall do all. Drink shall wine. drink of the wine of the wrath of who? Of God. Means? Which is poured out without mixture. Yeah. Into the cup of his indignation. Into the cup of his indignation. Continue. And it shall be tormented with fire and brimstone. Yeah. In the presence of the holy angels. In the, the presence of the Lord. holy angels. And in the presence of who? The Lamb. Of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment. Yeah. Ascended up forever and ever. Yeah. And they have no rest nor night. No rest. No rest day nor day, night. No night. Who worship the beast and his image. Yeah. And whosoever received the mark of his name. 
He is the patient of the saints. He is the patient of the saints. He are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of faith and the faith of Jesus and have the faith of Jesus. For for us to escape the mark of the beast, the image of the beast, and the worship of the beast, we need only two things. We are to keep the commandments of God and we are that we are to have the faith of Jesus. We are to have the faith of Jesus. So now I want us to begin with a particular message and then we look at uh, what I said this particular message and then we get to the second. Then tomorrow we continue the second as we continue that way. The first message of the message says we are to fear God and give glory to Him. To him. How do we fear God? How do we fear God? Ecclesiastes chapter but before we go to the this, let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 13. How are we to fear, to fear God? How do we fear God? 8 13 of, of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to do what? To hate evil. Continue. Pride. Pride. And arrogancy. And the evil way. And the evil way. And the proud mouth. And the proud mouth. Do I hate? Do I hate? What is it? When you put a mumbo, 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 you a mumbo, you put a mumbo, you put a mumbo, Will eschew evil, will not, uh, uh, will not be interested in evil ways. Who are not proud, uh, who are not proud, who are uh, ample or they have humility. Are you together? So, and what are some of the evils that we need uh, to, to hate? What are some of those? Turn to the book of. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 21. So, those who fear God, they hate evil. They hate evil. Mark 7 and verse 21. The Bible says, For from within, for from within, out of the heart of man, out of the heart of God, out of the heart of man, proceed what? Evil gods. Evil gods. One. One is another. That is a man or a woman who is married, getting out of marriage. Continue reading. Fornication. Fornication in the second. Fornication, a girl, a boy, doing the act of marriage while not in marriage. Continue reading. Mothers. Mothers. And remember, those who hate their brothers are mothers. We read that one. In first John chapter 3 and verse 15. We as God's people, we are to love even our enemies. 5 Matthew verse 44. Now continue reading. Death. Death. God's people are not to be involved in death. Not are we to even in, to be involved in death of God's time and covenant. Continue reading. Covetousness. Covetousness. That is last. Covetousness, continue. Wickedness. Wickedness. Wickedness, continue. This is. This is. This is. Continue again. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Continue again. An evil eye. An, an evil eye. An evil eye. An evil eye. Continue. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Matuka, blasphemy. What do you Pride. Pride. It has already been mentioned, isn't it? Pride is one of the evil ways. What do you Foolishness. And foolishness. And foolishness. Remember, foolish are the building upon the sun, isn't it? Not upon the soil of. What do you all these evil things come from all these evil things. 
things come where? Come from within. From within the earth. And divide the, and the divine man. That's why God is looking for people who will, who will do or will hate him evil. I want a pedestal on a maofu. Yet if I think of not all the way or pedestal of Father Mao, Mao, Father is such a Mao. God is looking for such a people. That's why he's even giving this last message of mercy. How else do we fear God? Read or turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, as I mentioned earlier, 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. How else do we fear God? After we hate evil, pride, arrogance, proper mouth, how else do we uh, fear God? In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, the Bible says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The conclusion of the whole matter, fear God. we are to fear God and keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. So the conclusion of this one is to fear God and keep his commandments. Why? For well, this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. So the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. As simple as that. We have to fear God and keep what? His commandment. But remember, we are not saved by keeping the commandments. We are saved by grace. Grace through faith. But this faith must work by now. Are you together? This faith must lead us into good works. Are you together? And that's why the saints of the God's people are to keep the commandments of God and are to have the faith of who? Jesus Christ. So those who fear God keep his commandments. They keep God's command? commandments. Those who fear God. How do we how do we glorify God? How do we glorify God? When you turn to the book of uh, Turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. How do you glorify God? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. The Bible says, Whether therefore you eat, whether, whether therefore you do or eat, or, or, drink, or, drink, or, or drink, or whatsoever you, or you, whatsoever you do, you call to the glory do all to the glory of God. So whatever you do, should you do what? Glorify God. When a boy and a girl want to engage in a relationship, the first question should be, is this glorify God? Whatever you do, whether you eat or you drink, or whatever you do, you should do to the glory of who? God. So the first question you should ask yourself on whatever you are doing is this glorify God. I know some have thoughts when you have your phone, whatever you are watching or whatever you are uh, glancing at in your phone, that's it, glorify God. That should be the first que question. Whatever art. The first question is, is this glorify God? And in order for us to glorify God, turn with me to the book of uh, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 26. We need Christ in our heart. We cannot glorify God unless Christ is in our heart to help us glorify Him, to help us reflect the glory of the Lord. Colossians 1 and verse 26. Down one, and before you read, you remember when Moses in the book of Exodus, I believe it is Exodus uh, chapter that three and chapter that four, when Moses asked God to show him his glory, glory. The Bible says the Lord passed before him. That is uh, Exodus chapter 34 and verse 5. You can read for yourself at your own time. When the Lord passed before him, Moses 
declare the character of the Lord. So when we are talking of the glory of the Lord, we are talking of the character of the Lord. Lord. So whatever we do, if it is to glorify God, it means we are reflecting the character of who? Our, of our God. Are we together? We are reflecting the character of our Lord, which we have received from Him. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 26. The Bible says, Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, yeah. but now is made manifest to his saints. That mystery is made manifest to his saints. To his saints, continue. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, yeah. which is Christ in you. And that glory is Christ in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So we have been the Christ in us, the hope of glory. For us to reflect the character of God. Of our God. You know, when Moses saw the character of God, he was also, uh, the Lord said, I will declare my name, my name. And you know what a, a name entails? The first Samuel, you can remind me the first uh, uh, preacher. Uh, I believe it is first Samuel, is it 25, 25? Please, is that first? When you talk of a name, you talk of character. You talk of character. When you talk of glory, you talk of character of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The name of the Lord is character. Uh, first Samuel, I believe, chapter 25. And first 25, if I'm not wrong. Uh, first Samuel chapter 25 and verse 25, the Bible says, the says, says, Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of the Lion, even Naban, for as his name is, so is he. So as the name of Naban is, so he is. When you read the Jinalaki Livio, Livia 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 So the name, the character. <laughs> Name character. You are Jews in the male. I saw a man by the name Kagen, Kagen too. The man shall be to a by a good. And for sure, the name is a possible for me. I think of a mother, Yanuka is like a Gina, Gina, I pardon my son. Who went to? So as the name, so he is. Are you together? So when we are talking of the name of the Lord, we are talking of the character of the Lord. When we are talking of the glory of the Lord, we are talking of the character of God. So it means we need to reflect the character of the Lord fully. Are you together? So God is looking for a people who will reflect the character of the Lord. The character of the Lord. Are you together? In whatever they eat, do. Whether they eat, whether they drink, they will eat and drink according to the will of God. They will dress according to the will of God. Whatever they do, they will do according to the will of who? Of our Father in heaven. Are you together? Then we are told they are doing that because the hour of judgment is come. It's come. We will have to look at that hour of judgment. We will have a study on the sanctuary and about the investigative, investigative judgment. About the day of atonement. Are we together? Uh, or maybe a uh, Bible study teacher may go even give that study. How how do we worship the true God? I think the our judgment for another study. Are you together? Because it's a it's a big study. It is some time. So I want us to to know how we uh, who is the true God? He is the creator. So we are to worship the creator. And if we do not worship the creator, we will be found we will find ourselves worshiping another one. Another, another God, instead of true God, God. Why? Even Satan himself wants to be what? 
worship is supporting my father. Shetani hata mwenyewe anataka kuamliwa, kuamliwa. Brother. Hata shetani anataka kuamliwa. Kadiri Biblia yao. Tuka tuyo Bible. We are we? Isaiah 14 verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven? How art thou fallen from heaven? All Lucifer. All Lucifer. Son of morning. How art thou cut down to the ground? Yes. Which did weaken the nations? So it is Lucifer who has weakened the nations. Continue to read. For thou hast said in thine heart, Lucifer said in his heart, I will ascend it to heaven. He, he said, I will ascend it to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So he will exalt his throne. Meaning he has a throne? A throne. Lucifer has a throne. And he says, I will exalt my throne above what? The stars of heaven. When we are talking of stars, we are talking of angels. That is Revelation 1, verse 20. Are you together? Uh, Revelation 1, verse 20 is talking of the seven stars being seven angels. Are you together? So, and even Jesus is called morning or big star, isn't it? So it means he wanted to, uh, uh, to exalt his throne above even the throne of Christ. Are you together? He wanted to be above Christ. Continue reading. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. He said, I will sit upon the mount of congregation. When we talk of a mountain, we talk of a church, we talk of a government. Are you together? So Lucifer wanted to put his throne or his government on a mountain. Meaning, He wanted to have a religious political government. Get that clear. Are you together? He wanted to, uh, to rule uh, religious matters and even political ma matters. When you read Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, it is talks of uh, the mountain of the house of the Lord, being exalted above all mountains and above all hills. That is Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, and Micah chapter 4, verse 1. So when we are talking of a mountain, we are talking of a church, or a nation, or a kingdom. Are we together? So Satan wanted to exalt his throne and sit upon the mountain of congregation. So if he wanted to sit even in a church, he also wanted to rule a great congregation. Are we together? So Satan wants worship. And Satan wants to uh, wants rulership. He wants to have a government. He wanted to have a government. He said, "I want to have a better government than God's one." Continue reading. In the signs of the Lord. Yes. So and remember, he said, "It is in the sense of God, of law." So we need to understand where is law. Continue reading. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like, I will be like the most high. So he wanted to be like the God, isn't it? So if God is worshipped, he wanted to be worshipped. If God has a kingdom, has a throne, Lucifer said, I have a throne. And I want to exalt my throne. Are you together? So, Satan wants to be worshipped, God is to be worshipped, because he is the creator. Revelation 13, and verse 4, we are shown that Satan wants to be worshipped, but we do not see Satan himself coming and saying, I want to be worshipped. You see some other one. So that when you worship him, or you worship another one, you are worshipping Satan himself. Revelation 13 and verse 4. Revelation 13 and verse 4 says, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And the dragon gave power unto who? Unto the beast. And they worship the beast. Yes. Saying, Who is like unto the beast? So when people are worshiping the beast, they are worshiping who? The dragon. Are you together? Who is the dragon? Satan, Revelation 12, verse 9. Dragon was cut, cast down. That great serpent, the whole serpent. Who is called the 
devil and and Satan. That is Revelation 12 and verse 9. So, so when we are talking of the dragon, we are talking of Sa Satan. So Satan wants to be worshipped, but he wants to be worshipped through the beast. The beast power. Look at that. But before that, we are told we are to worship the true God. God. So before the whole world will worship the beast, God rewards us and calls us to worship him, the true God. How do we know the true God? Ezekiel 20 and verse 20. I want to just make it simple and very clear. Ezekiel 20 and verse 20. How do we understand this is true God? Ezekiel 20 and verse 20, the Bible says, and hallow my servant. The Bible says, and hallow my servant. That is sanctify my son, my servant. Why? And there shall be a sign between me and Sabbath and a sign between God and his people. Right together. Mm -hmm. Continue reading. That you may know that I am the Lord your God. That you may know that I am the Lord your yeah. God. So how do we understand this is our God? By sanctifying what? The Sabbath. So when we are rejecting the Sabbath, we are rejecting a sign which shows our true God, God. You know when we are coming to this Segero uh, and then it's good. You have a, a signboard somewhere there, you see? What if now I see that signboard and reject to fall that signboard to here? Will I come to Segero and then it's No, I divert to somewhere else. So we have Sabbath as a sign directing us to the true God, true God. Ezekiel 20 and verse 12. So it says, Ezekiel 20 and verse 12. So Sabbath is a sign that defines true God. Read the verse. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath. I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between, me, a and sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. Okay, so our true God and even the Lord who sanctifies us is the Sabbath, is the Lord of the Sabbath. The God of the Sabbath. So when we are rejecting the Sabbath, we are rejecting the sign directing us to Christ, directing us to our God. Are you together? And that's what Jesus is saying himself that he is the Lord even of the Sabbath. Sabbath. Mark chapter 2 and verse 28. Mark chapter 2 and verse 28. The Bible tells us that. Sabbath is a sign, and Jesus is the Lord of that Sabbath. So when we are rejecting Sabbath, we are rejecting even the sign which directs us to Jesus. Because Jesus is the creator. Without him, nothing was made. Nothing was made without Jesus. That is Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Turn, uh, where are you? Mark. Mark chapter 2. Begin from verse 27. Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. And he said unto them, And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man. The Sabbath was made for man. For man. You know, there are those who continue, who try to uh, to try to make people confuse that past. And try to say that because Sabbath was made for man, there is no importance of man in the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, this says. Like the like the, this form. This phone was meant to be used by who? By animals. <laughs> this phone was meant to be used by who? By human beings, is it? By men. So if Sabbath was, if this phone was, was meant to be used by mankind or to be used by human beings, it means it was meant for human beings, is it? So if the Sabbath was meant for man, it means without man, there will be no Sabbath. Am I right to say so? Yes. So Sabbath was meant for man. It was not made for Christ, and it was not meant for God. It was meant for man. And that's why it is after God created man that he gave him Sabbath. He created man on the sixth day, and on the seventh day, he blessed the seventh day, and called it the Sabbath day. He hallowed the Sabbath day, sanctified the Sabbath day, and even blessed the Sabbath day. He rested on that Sabbath day to show us an example. 
and gave this to man. He said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it all holy. What is the reason behind keeping the Sabbath holy? To remind us he is the true God. Turn to the book of Exodus chapter 20. So Sabbath divides our true God. If we reject Sabbath, we reject our true God. Exodus 20, begin from verse, read even verse 11. Do you know from verse 8 says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it? Only six days shall thou labor and do all your work to a work. But on the seventh day, on which day? On the seventh day, specifically the seventh day, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So Sabbath is the one which divides the Lord our God. Finish the verse, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. For in six days, this is this one. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Meaning, or defining himself as the creator of heaven and world. And earth, brother, the same, away. And all that is them. I do the just meditation. Yes, continue. Uh, the sea and all that in them is. Yes. And rested the seventh day. And rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And hallowed it. So it is only the seventh day that God blessed and sanctified. And he rested on that day, on that day. So we have the seventh day as a, as a sign between God and his people. Yeah, you can open the windows, open the windows so that you may have some fresh air coming in. Thank you so much. If you're just near the window, open the window. Okay, so we have a Sabbath, and which is the Sabbath day, by the way? Which is the Sabbath day? The seventh day. Which is the seventh day, by the way? Which is the seventh day? No, there are some people who do not understand which is the seventh day. Which is the seventh day? Saturday. 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 Is it? Yeah. Uh, I believe even those who have been taking CRI, they have gone, uh, they have even read about the seven, the seven days of the week. Is it? Yeah. And we can also put that that one from the Bible. You turn to the book of Luke chapter 24. Let's stand there. About the death of Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can prove it from the Bible that it is on Saturday, that is the Sabbath day. Luke 23. Luke 23. I, I, I want us to read all the passions, uh, the passions which, which are here. Which are here. We have uh, someone asked in James Passion Bible, another one asked. The Christ Standard, another one asked. Good news, another one asked. And I need, okay, we need those verses, and those, those, those uh, versions of the Bible. What to, to understand which is the Sabbath day according to the Bible. We are in Luke chapter 23, verse 54. You go just uh, a few verses up from verse 24, you see it is about uh, the death of Jesus Christ, and his body on the same uh, the, the self -self day, and then the holy day, and then. Uh, from, past, uh, from 24, past 1 of you, you see the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Are we there? Luke 23, past 24. Past 54. Just, just uh, I want our our teacher to read from there. Then I want uh, good news here. And I'll be here. And who else? Yes. Reverse that again. Please. I took it here. Uh, please say, let's come to the Apostle Paul who is about to say, ah, good news, you have an ID, if I start that, yes, come, good news, please come, ah, uh, please say, 23, 24, 23, 24, you, and that day was the preparation, that day Jesus died and was buried. That day was preparation Amen. day, meaning people were preparing for the Sabbath. It was called preparation day because they were preparing for the Sabbath. 
That is the devil to the back of the world. Cross. So for preparation day, for the day, that day was on preparation day. And the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was about to go to begin. So for preparation day, we go to Sabbath day. Are you together? Now, which is that day according to this Bible? Friday. So the Bible says it was Friday and the Sabbath was about to begin. So from Friday, we go to what? To Sabbath. From Friday, we go to Sabbath. To Sabbath day. So it was Friday and the Sabbath was about to begin. So from Friday, we go to Sabbath. That day. <coughs> So people, we are, we are preparing for the Sabbath, is it? Okay. Okay, it was day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. To begin. This is very clear that, Sabbath, that it was Friday. Friday. Now Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew 28, verse 1. The date was one, Matthew, the Bible says, Bible says, and in the end of the Sabbath, and the end of all, on the Sabbath, continue, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, so at the Sabbath, we go to the first day of the week, at the Sabbath, we go to the first day of the week, the first day of the week is called, just read. After the Sabbath, a Sunday morning was dawn. So from Sabbath, we go to Sunday. So Sabbath is the day between Friday and Sunday. That day in between is called Sabbath day. Is that clear? Is that clear? Okay. Have a, have a seat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the uh, Now, because it is very clear from the Bible that Sabbath is on the seventh day. And all the books, even the books of history, even dictionary, even Kamus, even Quran, all the books will tell you that the seventh day is Saturday. All the books. Only that uh, nowadays people want to confuse us. You read some dictionaries, you will find they are, they are trying to change the meaning of the Sabbath day and saying it is Saturday for the Jews and uh, Sunday for the Christians. Question Do you have two Sabbath, Sabbath days in the Bible? No. no. The same, same Sabbath day which was kept by the Jews is the same, same Sabbath day that we need to keep. Are you together? Because it is the Sabbath day which divides our God, our God, our creator of heaven and earth and earth. Question, did God create Jews only? No, we, are, we were also created by who? By God, isn't it? We were created by God. And if we accept that we are created by God, the Sabbath was made for man, it was not made for Jews. It was not made for Israel, it was made for man. For man, man uh, 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 go back to the book of Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. Let's go down to verse 28. The Bible says, and he said unto them, He said unto them, The Sabbath was, the Sabbath was made for, for man, for man. And, not man for the and not man for the Sabbath. For the Sabbath. For the Therefore, the Sabbath man. Therefore, the Son of Man. Who is that? Jesus. Jesus Christ is called the Son of who? The Son of Man, therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Is, the, is Lord also of the Sabbath. So the Lord of the Sabbath is who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. So we reject the Sabbath, we reject the side which shows our Lord and our God. Should we accept the Sabbath as a side between us and our God? Should we accept? Yes. 